Hello everyone, this is Zane from EZ, and for this guide video, I'm here with Ali to bring you our top tips and tricks for intermediate players in Zenith The Last City. Upgrading your gear and weapons, either through enemy drops or item synthesis, is a good way to scale your character power when tackling harder content. Each region has its own synthesis station, which uses the different region-specific materials to make upgraded weapons and armor unique to that area. The process of synthesis is pretty straightforward. On the top section of the station display, you can see the menu for the available classes. For each class, different sets and levels of gear may be available, depending on the synthesis station you are using. Before you start, it's important to make sure you pick the correct class and set according to your needs. Otherwise, you'll end up picking gear that you cannot wear because it's not suitable for either your class or your current level. Each item synthesis also requires Zen in order to complete, with the cost for each piece of gear shown under the image of the item in the right info panel. Make sure you have enough Zen before trying to synthesize your desired piece of gear or else the station will reject your request. After selecting the gear you want to synthesize, go ahead and press the green button to your right. This will initiate the synthesis process. If you want to change the selected gear, or you accidentally started the synthesis process, just press the green button again to cancel, and the materials that you have used up so far will be returned to your inventory. Once the synthesis is initiated, Grab the materials at the bottom of the station and drag them towards the item display. Repeat this process until the selected gear has fully formed in front of you. Then wait a few seconds for the process to finish before grabbing the item to put into your inventory. Your newly synthesized item will be highlighted in your inventory screen, ready to be equipped. Now that you have your gear, you might want to think about enhancing it. Enhancing an item will increase the primary stat on that piece of gear and can add up to 3 extra modifiers for extra stat or ability boosts. To begin an enhancement, head on over to your nearest enhancement station. Usually, the Nexus District is your go-to area to locate enhancement stations, but they can also be found near the Amorite Forest, Obsidian Fortress, Radiant Coast, and Emerald Desert Fast Travel Zones. The station currently has 3 modes, Enhancement, Infusion, and Reroll. We have made excellent guides that explain infusing and rerolling of gear in our previous videos. Their links will be in the description for you to check out. The enhancement menu will be color coded as a light blue interface, so if your menu doesn't look like this, press the red button to your left until you are on the right menu. Once you have selected the enhancement option, find and click on the gear that you want to enhance. This can be a little bit tricky especially if you have multiple copies of the same piece of gear. Be careful and hover over the item to check its modifiers before selecting it to ensure you are enhancing the right piece. After selecting your desired gear, take a glance at the bottom interface. This will display how much each enhancement will cost, the next level of the enhancement, the success rate of the enhancement, and the amount of enhancement dust this process will consume. To proceed with the enhancement, Pull on the lever to your right. If the gear is successfully enhanced, it will glow brightly for a short moment, accompanied by a noticeable jingle effect. If it fails, it will be covered in a dark cloud for a short moment, followed by a breaking sound effect. If the process does fail, don't worry. As long as you have enough enhancement dust for the upgrade, you can keep pulling the lever until the enhancement is successful. Each level of enhancement will increase your primary stat but extra modifiers will only be added at the plus 4, plus 8, and plus 10 enhancement levels. At plus 4, the gear will be enhanced with a slightly increasing modifier. At plus 8, it'll be given a regularly increasing modifier, and at plus 10, it'll be given a moderately increasing modifier for a total of up to 3 additional modifiers you can have on your gear. Note that the number of additional modifiers you can have on a gear depends on its rarity. Common rarity gear can only have one extra modifier, uncommon and rare gear can have two extra modifiers, and epic and legendary gear can have three extra modifiers. The first four levels of enhancement consume 15 basic enhancement dust per level. The next four levels consume 10 super enhancement dust per level. 
The last two levels consume 5 Mega Enhancement Dust per level, for a total of 10 Enhancement Levels on your selected gear. At some point, you'll find that your dust supply has run out if you aren't consistently adding to your stockpile. Besides dusting unwanted gear, as was shown in our beginner guide video, one of the best ways to replenish basic dust is to do something that the community calls chest runs. For those that don't know, Zenith has over 250 loot chests scattered around the world that drop region-specific materials, enhancement dust, food recipes, and even higher quality gear when opened. Chest runs are specific routes that the community has developed that lets you grab all of the chests in a region in the most efficient path possible. We have actually made a global chest run walkthrough guide that goes through all of the chests and all of the regions in Zenith, so make sure to go check it out to become familiarized with how it works. These routes are also available to view on our website through our interactive world map by clicking on any of the chests on the map which can be toggled on using the gather list tab. The link to both of these resources will also be down in the description. Super dust can be obtained from either chest loot or from dusting gear of uncommon or rare quality. Uncommon or rare gear that has been enhanced will give you back more dust per item at the cost of the basic dust used to complete the enhancement. The fastest way to replenish super dust is to obtain any uncommon or rare gear that you don't need, enhance them up to plus 4, then dust them. This ensures that you get the maximum return without using your existing super dust in the process. The same concept applies for mega dust, but with epic or legendary items at the cost of both basic and super dust. In this case, obtain some epic or legendary gear first, then enhance it up to plus 8 before dusting them. Again, this allows you to get the most amount of dust possible without using up your current stockpile. In its first major update, Zenith introduced dungeons and raids as instance content to players that provides varying levels of challenges and tougher enemies, in exchange for synthesis materials and higher quality gear as potential rewards. Dungeons can be unlocked at character levels 10, 23, 32, and 40, with raids only being accessible to max level players who successfully completed every previous instance dungeon and have climbed to the top of the Celestial Throne. To enter an instance, go to your menu bar and select the Dungeons and Raids icon. This will bring up the Dungeons and Raids menu where you can select which instance to enter matchmaking for. To start matchmaking, click on the desired instance to the left of the menu, select the rank star to the right of the panel, and click the join button at the bottom right. For a dungeon queue, you need at least one other person in the same queue to enter the instance. For raid queues, you need a minimum of four players to enter. If you are entering matchmaking while in a party with your friends, only the party leader will be able to select the instance for the party. And if at any point you fail to enter the instance, crash, or otherwise get kicked out of your current instance, you can attempt to rejoin the instance by clicking on any raid or dungeon in the raid menu, and then clicking the rejoin instance button below the join button at the bottom right of the menu. Now for the instances themselves. Let's take a look at the roulette section first. There are currently three roulettes that you can enter. Leveling roulette, raid roulette, and expert roulette. Each roulette gives you a decent amount of rewards per run, in addition to the base rewards you get for simply completing the instance, so it's a good idea to run these first. You can collect each of the roulette rewards three times a day. The leveling roulette is a dungeon roulette that will randomly pick any rank 1 dungeon you have unlocked so far and queue you into the matchmaking for it. You would pick this roulette if you are trying to quickly level up your character or your other subclasses since the roulette reward provides the greatest amount of XP per run of any of the instance options. After completing a single leveling roulette run, you gain 10 rocks of ancients, 8 basic enhancement dust, 8500 zen, and a large amount of XP scaled to your level. The raid roulette is only available to level 40 players that have unlocked access to at least one raid. Like the leveling roulette, the raid roulette will randomly enter you into matchmaking 
for any of the rank 1 raids that you have unlocked. Also similar to the leveling roulette, you gain 10 marks of ancients, 12,500 zen, 20,365 xp, and 2 marks of thedras as rewards for each run through. If you have at least one rank 2 dungeon unlocked, you will have also gained access to the expert roulettes, which will randomly pick a rank 2 or higher dungeon from those you have available. To unlock the next dungeon rank, you need a certain number of completions for that specific dungeon. You can check your progress by selecting one of the dungeons and clicking on a star to see your current completions for that dungeon, as well as the number of completions necessary to unlock the next rank. As rewards for completing an expert roulette, you gain 10 marks of ancients, 10,000 zen, 20,365 xp, and 7 marks of thesaurus. While running these roulettes, there is also a small chance to obtain optimal orbs, which are used to reroll your existing modifiers. In the individual raids and dungeons tab of the menu, you can select the instance content of your choosing without the randomness and the extra rewards from the roulettes. Each instance can be run up to a total of 3 times per day, and the rewards for each instance and rank are shown on the right of the panel after clicking the corresponding rank star under the instance name. Pets are not only cute companions that you can summon to join you for your journey through Xena, but each pet has a special set of perks that you can use to enhance your overall character build. However, the mechanics of creature capturing can be difficult to understand at first, so to help explain, we will show you how to summon and care for your very own pet. For this example, we will use the fairy fly. To summon a fairy fly, you only tap capture 15 of them with your creature trap orbs. Note that the number of creature captures needed to summon that creature as a pet varies with the type of creature you're trying to catch. Once thrown, there are two ways that the creature orbs can be triggered to capture the target creature. If the orb impacts the ground, it'll trigger automatically, and if it's within a certain range of the creature, it'll pull them into the orb and attempt to capture. The second way to trigger an orb is by pulling the trigger on one of your controllers while the orb is still in the air. This will activate the orb, and if it's close to a creature, will initiate the capture. This method of triggering is especially useful for flying creatures like these fairy flies. Once caught, the creature may try to escape the orb and run away. The lower the creature's stamina bar after a catch, the more likely you are to have a successful capture. If you manage to directly hit a creature with an orb, you'll hear a ding sound, indicating a perfect throw, and a creature's stamina bar will drop more with a perfect throw than if you only triggered the orb nearby. If the creature manages to break out of the orb, simply repeat the process until you have a successful capture. Keep in mind though, that once you pull the creature into an orb, you'll have a limited amount of time to finish catching the creature before it disappears. Once you have captured the required amount of the fairy flies, go into your menu and select the life skills icon. On the left hand side, you will see a button called summoning. From this menu page, you will see the fairy fly icon, with a whole bunch of locked icons as well. For now, select the fairy fly icon, and on the right hand side, you will see the summon button. Press the button, and your pet fairy fly should spawn in front of you. If you haven't caught enough creatures to summon your pet, this page will instead show you what tier of capture you need to unlock the summon and your capture progress can be viewed in the creature capture tab of your life skills menu. As you can see, our fairy fly has a sad icon above its nameplate. This indicates that it can be petted to increase its XP. Reach your hand over your pet until you receive controller feedback and a nice sound effect to indicate its happiness. Another way to increase your pet's XP is to continue capturing creatures of that type after unlocking the summon. You can pet your pets up to 4 times a day, starting from these times. Petting your pets makes them happy, and unlocks pet perks like this one. To check the perks you have unlocked so far, click on the pet that you want to check, and click on the details button. Detailed information such as XP, pet level, and pet perks is displayed for you to check out. 
Most of the instance content in Zenith relies on the players having a certain eye level in order to enter a dungeon or raid. But what is eye level? Your average eye level or item level is an indicator of your character's overall power level. You can check your average item level by looking at the stats panel on the left side of your inventory menu. The game calculates your eye level by taking the individual eye levels of your armor and weapons and finds the average by adding up the eye level values and dividing it by 7, which is the number of gear slots that your character has. Strangely, when determining the final value for this average, the game rounds up to the next whole number, which means that if the actual average eye level ends up being 41.3, the game will round it up to 42. The higher your eye level, the better equipped you are to tackle harder content, so do your best to increase your eye level as much as you can. As a part of the armor and ability perk system, Zenith provides an easy way to see your current character statistics using the stats panel to the left of your main inventory screen. Understanding how your stats work will improve your overall experience with your chosen subclass. Each of your subclasses best utilizes one of three primary stats, attack, affinity or support, and defense. Increasing attack will grant you a percentage of extra critical chance. Increasing affinity affects your maximum mana pool, and increasing defense will increase your armor and constitution value, which gives you extra bonus health. Ability power, or AP, is calculated based on the total values of all three primary stats combined. AP is important for every aspect of your subclass, as the majority of your skills scales off of a certain percentage of your AP. Lastly, increasing your stamina value extends your stamina pool, which allows you to perform stamina draining actions for a longer period of time. In the world of Xena, your character has access to special abilities that are stored in what are called Godstones. Each Godstone can be viewed as a different version of a particular ability with certain abilities being interchangeable to better tailor your character to different playstyles. Each subclass has access to both their own subclass-specific godstones and general godstones that can be used by any of their subclasses. To see and change your active godstones, open up your godstone menu by clicking on the godstone icon next to your inventory. On this page, you can see every godstone skill available to your subclass on the left side along with the activation method. Once you select one of the godstone skills, you can see the godstones that you have collected for that skill in the panel on the right. In the beginning, you are given starter common godstones to begin your story. Over time, you will find better godstones to replace them, mostly by farming specific enemies in different regions. Higher quality godstones give additional modifiers to your skills, which can be unlocked as the godstone is leveled up. One of the best spots to find good godstones in the early level regions is in the Galleon Valley, specifically in the area where the enemy called the Exile Leader is located. The Exile Leader is classified as a Gold Skull enemy, meaning that it is one of the strongest enemies in the region. It also means that they can drop rare godstones and epic godstones, which provide higher godstone points and more potential modifiers than the uncommon and lower rank godstones. As you continue to level up your character, you will find more of these types of enemies around the world, so make sure to keep an eye out for them. The best godstone farming location in the later level regions is the Queen's Path Overworld Dungeon, specifically the four main enemies, Invictux the Corrupter, the Twin Gargantuan Sylphids, and Drudge Thunderfoot. These enemies are also classified as Gold Skulls which makes this overworld dungeon the largest concentration of gold skulls for ghost farming. As you progress through the game, you may find that some of your godstone skills have been cluttered up with common godstones obtained through enemy drops. The maximum number of godstones you can have for a single ability is 50, and if you reach the cap, it will prevent you from collecting more godstones for that skill. A simple solution to cleaning them up is to press this button on the bottom left and any common godstone without XP will be cleared from your inventory. This button, however, does not get rid of uncommon or higher godstones, so you will need to clear them out manually.
For each character that you create, there will be three subclasses that you will have access to. To switch to another subclass, go into your Godstone menu, then to the left side of the panel, you will see your subclass options. Clicking on one of the subclass icons instantly switches to the chosen subclass. Please note that after switching, there is a 30 second cooldown timer in which you are unable to switch to another subclass. Subclass switching is also unavailable if you are in combat with an enemy, so make sure that you are in a safe area away from enemies before switching. Titles are a great way to show off your accolades in Xena. You may have unlocked promotional titles by participating in an event or helping out the community in a larger way. To equip your title, open your inventory page and to the far left, you will see a drop down menu of your available titles that you can equip. To other people, your nameplate will now look like this. If you don't have a title yet, no worries. Be on the lookout in the official Xena Discord server for future promotional title giveaways. A useful feature that is not well known is the ability to target nearby enemies. By using the targeting feature, a persistent health bar of the targeted enemy will appear in front of you, allowing you to track the current health of that enemy, regardless of your distance or field of view. This feature is especially useful for blade masters dealing with larger enemies, since you don't have to look all the way up to see how much health and stagger progress the enemy has. To activate the targeting feature, point your right controller towards an enemy and click on your right joystick like a button. A red diamond outline should appear above the enemy's head and their health bar should now be in front of you at all times until the enemy is defeated or you target another enemy. To get rid of the target, move far away from the targeted enemy or point your target at an ally. The latter option does not get rid of the target diamond but it does get rid of the health bar, just in case it is starting to annoy you. The only other way to fully cancel a target is to target and then defeat an enemy. Every VR user has different locomotion preferences for every game. In Zenith, you can change your comfort settings by pressing this icon that resembles a person with VR goggles, and a variety of comfort options will be available to you. If you're a person that prefers vignettes, you can toggle vignettes for the majority of your locomotion settings. If you are a smooth turn user, there's an option for that as well. If the smooth walking view triggers motion sickness for you, you also have the option to switch to the out of body point of view during the various forms of locomotion. Grip sensitivity can be adjusted on the left panel for better control of your grabbing and throwing. You can also enable a toggle for your grip button, which allows you to hold on to an object or your weapons by pressing your grip button once. With toggle grip active, you can use your weapons without needing to continuously hold down the grip button, which is especially useful if you have trouble with grabbing your controllers for a long period of time. Zenith also supports B Haptics VR suit capabilities, which you can also enable for all available platforms. For PC VR users, your settings page will be slightly different than Quest users. On the left hand side, you have access to the Steam VR full body tracking option. On the right hand side, you will see your streaming options. Note that these settings will affect your desktop view, not your VR view. You have four different streamer settings default, smooth first person, third person, and handheld. For Quest users, a feature that might be useful to lessen the freeing memory screens is to enable Portal for Regions. This will allow your game to load a single region instead of multiple regions at the same time. This might reduce the amount of freeing memory screens due to lesser assets being loaded in at a time. As we mentioned in our beginner's guide, this menu is also where you can access your glide mode, minimap, and recenter options. If you're playing with a friend and they want to join you in your shard, but you forgot which shard you loaded into, you can check your current shard by navigating to the settings and logout icon on the far right of your menu and looking at the shard name at the top right corner of the panel. One of the greatest parts about Zenith is the feeling of unity 
as players in the community are more than willing to offer assistance to those in need. If you met some interesting players while doing a quest, but you forgot to add them as friends afterwards, you can quickly go over to the Recents tab at the bottom of the Socials menu and find the players that you have recently interacted with or have been in close proximity with. In the unlikely case that you met someone who was rude, annoying, or breaking the rules of the game, but didn't have time to open their player menu, you can also use this feature to mute, block, or report the offending player. When you create a character in Zenith, most of your chosen features and characteristics will be locked to your selection for the lifetime of the character. If for some reason you want to change your character's name, however, first create a new temporary character in the game with your desired name. Next, go to the Zenith Skywave website and log in with your Skywave account. If you don't remember your Skywave account, you can ask for assistance in the Zenith Discord server by messaging the mod mailbot and selecting option 3 for Skywave account help. Once you have logged in, navigate to your characters tab and select your character. There should be an option called swap name. Select a temporary character on the drop down menu and click swap. The next time you go on your main character, your display name should now reflect the new name you have chosen. Once you have changed your name, you can now navigate to your temporary character and click Delete Character to delete that character from your account. Thanks for watching our Intermediate Tips and Tricks guide. We hope you learned something new that you can now apply to your gameplay. Happy questing, and we will see you in the land of Zenith. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more Essence Zealots content, and remember, it's GG Easy with EZ.